So, How are you guys? We're great. We're How doing okay. Yourself? Oh, pretty good. So uh, I was just listening in a little bit. This is awesome. Just want to say thanks for uh, thanks for doing this to honor my brother. You know, that's really cool. You know, honestly, oh. I, and and I said this at the very beginning. This is uh, Jacob put this all together. He has a couple questions that he wants to ask you and everything. And uh, yeah, he he was telling me about this in o October when every year we're trying to do like a, a saltober where we get together and we talk about like nine, 10 things from the franchise that we love. And we just list like best to worst or literally best to best because we're big fans. And uh, we heard about leading up to it. He was telling me, he's like, oh, we heard about your brother and everything and his role in the last film with having talked to the writers and stuff like, and even the producer yeah. saying he's probably going to come back in some way, shape, or form. It's just kind of a blow, especially just the story of it and getting a chance to see the real stuff that he put together as well as, like, the interviews and the stand-up and everything that uh, Jacob sent me was amazing. So, uh, oh, yeah. yeah, this is amazing. Yeah, yeah. I watched the uh, the tribute video you guys did for him there with his uh, – it was music. Mm -hmm. It was uh, him singing Kenny Chesney and some of yeah. his – some of yeah. his performance stuff on there as well. That was really that looked looked really well. It was awesome. So yeah. uh, we of course, like I said, before we go into questions, like we first want to consider our condolences to you and your family, of course, obviously. But like I said, tonight, tonight we just want to celebrate, you know, his work and his memory tonight. That's what tonight's all about. Yeah. So. No, absolutely. But, yeah. No, I, I yeah. appreciate that. Thank you. So let's talk about like so. What were your uh, favorite childhood memories like growing up with uh, Josiah? Like you all grew up in Canada, is that correct? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we were actually both born in Thailand, which is kind of crazy. Um, oh, yeah? My our parents have uh, businesses out there. My my dad has a fly fishing uh, a fly fishing factory, as well as they started like a lot of orphanages and stuff like that. So um, my dad was born in California, and my mom as well, but. My mom's Canadian, so they decided to move to Canada, and that's where we grew up. So, um, oh, okay. as you can imagine, like we spent a lot of time outdoors and a lot of time just kind of being wild kids. You know, uh, Josiah is about four and a half years older than I am, so he was always uh, one step ahead of me. But we both were kind of born with this kind of daredevil kind of side to us. You uh -huh. know, like we love to. Uh, just push each other to our limits, like doing extreme things. And I remember I was like two and a half years old. I could barely walk and I was learning how to ride a bike with training wheels. And Josiah thought it was a good idea if I learned without training wheels, because, you know, he <laughs> he just believed in me and wanted me to uh, <laughs> wanted me to succeed in everything, I guess. So uh, I had to go. He had me go down a hill and uh, He's just basically like, you can do it, bro. And he kind of pushed me. And I just remember kind of like actually learning how to ride a bike with no training wheels when I was a tiny little kid that could barely walk. And uh, I could, I didn't know how to stop. And so that was kind of bad. So I, <laughs> I would fall. But uh, it didn't stop Josiah from having me, you know, keep on trying until I got it. So uh, that's just a little dynamic of how, you know, uh, my childhood was with Josiah. And of course, you know, we got into snowboarding at a young age. And we were the type of guys where this – the slopes would like stop and we would like stay on the mountain until dark. We would build a jump and just push each other to see who could jump higher or do a backflip or who, who could just soar higher basically. Um, but yeah, we were both kind of wild kids. He got in music uh, at, like uh, at a young age, just so talented with singing and with, uh, you know, playing guitar and it's really just kind of unreal. Like his talent, as you saw in that Kenny Chesney song, mm -hmm. he just, just did the cover for um, that was like Josiah's life. He was in a band, and when he was in high school, uh, I, I learned how to play drums when I was like 12 years old, and we had our own little like garage uh, jam outs, you know, with a drum kit and guitar and right. uh, and an amp, and we would just jam out. So we were kind of making art together, you know, from before we did acting or anything like that. We just liked doing like extreme sports and, and you know, our little band that we had at home. and. Uh, so, but yeah, you know, growing up with Josiah was, uh, it was a, like a gift in every way. He's the best older brother I could have ever asked for. And uh, yeah, and then shortly after that, you know, um, he went into uh, firefighting after high school. Wow. And he decided after graduating fire academy at Kilgore College in Texas that uh, it wasn't doing it for him. So he wanted to yeah, become an actor. 
<laughs> yeah, or he wanted to do like stand up comedy and like, you know, and then acting a little bit. And uh, he started in stand up comedy and, and then he ro- enrolled in Vancouver Film School and studied, started studying acting. And um, can, can I can I yeah. jump in here just a little bit? Because I, I also I'm from Texas, uh, but I when do you have this urge and like what is your if this don't the, it could be personal I don't want it to be too personal, but like, what goes into like the family life there, where your your family just is okay, and pr- were they pushing you to be like creative and individual, just be your own person and do whatever you want to do? Because as I was talking about earlier, just you know, having watched the stuff that Jacob sent me beforehand, and uh, also watching it again now, it's just the amount of passion there is there, and just the thrill of doing literally anything. I mean. <laughs> I I haven't lived tw- I haven't lived half the life that he lived uh and just with the adventure taking risks doing getting up on a stage telling jokes uh getting on a film set and putting yourself in front of the camera for so many people to see and judge and critique and stuff I mean there's so much bravery there uh what was y'all's home life as long as you're talking about your your backstory like your parents were they were they accepting thrilled that y'all were so adventurous so outgoing yeah so our parents are so cool and they're just extremely supportive they're like okay that's what you want to do you want to be a firefighter like go for it you know or okay you want to be uh a comedian go for it or an actor like they were just so um they i think that they just really believed in us and that's Mm -hmm. something that goes a really long way and i don't know if you know a lot of parents are that way but they were very supportive and uh uh, but yeah, you know, growing up was, as you, as you mentioned, like all the things that Desai did, like you saying, oh, maybe you didn't do all those things. Like he was 32 years old when, when he passed away and yeah. uh, people always say his friends and me and people close to him, and he lived like three lifetimes in that time of that he had, he really just knew how to live in the moment and kind of be fearless. You know, they say that people fear public speaking more than more than death a lot of the time and it's like trust me he's a lawyer i'm a school teacher so yeah (laughs) i've dealt with it i've dealt with it it's it's horrifying yeah so our parents were extremely supportive but you know at the same time it's it's just a lot of uh fearless decisions you know and uh we had talked about it when we were kids like i remember being like 13 years old and like i was watching these people on tv and i was like do they get paid for that like who are these people like i didn't i didn't really (laughs) understand like the whole concept of acting and how it all worked. But I was like, that looks like a lot of fun. It was specifically comedy that um, I thought was awesome and Josiah as well. And I think around that time I was like, yeah, one day I was like, I'm going to move to Hollywood and be an actor. And I I was like 13 years old. I remember saying that in the eighth grade. Um, And you know what? It's crazy looking back on it. I actually did that, you know, and and, uh, Josiah was probably um, like 17 when I had said that, but he, you know, on the path to be a firefighter and, um, he just kind of got it one step ahead of me. You know, he started acting school. And then when he was like in it for six months, he would come back and visit home and be like, Paul, oh, like you got to try this school out, man. When you get out of high school, dude, like you're going to love it. You know, it's uh, like, it's just totally, you're just going to rock at it, you know? And I remember being like, Oh, like this is like getting real now. Like, okay. I was saying I wanted to do this before, but now it's like, this is like where you have your high school plan of your plan A and your plan B that you present to your counselors, right. For your careers. And I remember putting together my whole plan A of being an actor. And they're like, I, I, I went to present it. And it was like a binder full of all these ideas. And they, they were like looking at me like I was crazy. They're like, you need to go and like fix this and think of something like legitimate and then come back. And I remember feeling like there was something wrong with me. And uh, the two principals actually stood up for me of our school. And they were awesome. They were like MMA guys that had an MMA course at our high school, like our principals, the only MMA course in Canada at a high school, but they kind of stood up for me and they're like, no, no, Paul can present it to us if you don't want to, want to present it to the counselors weren't accepting my idea of what I wanted to do. And basically, uh, you know, they thought it was awesome. They're like, go for it, give it a shot, you know? Mm-hmm. And, um, but anyways, so Josiah was already in acting school. And by the time I got in, he was, um, he was like in his last uh, few months. And I moved into a very small apartment with him in Vancouver, in mm-hmm. Gastown, and it was like literally like a, a hole in the wall closet, and there was like <laughs> mice in there. And we had another roommate. There was like three actors living in literally like this closet, 
with like bunk beds. Mm-hmm. And I just thought it was the coolest thing because I was moving in, you know, with my brother and, and uh, we were just waking up early before school, going on runs together, you know, uh, as the sun was coming up and push, pushing each other. And um, but, yeah, it was just great having parents that were supportive and, uh, and a fearless brother to uh, kind of pull me through by his side as well, you know. Um, yeah. so I was to say, like most people that go out in the LA route, route for acting, they always want to go either go by themselves, but you guys were very fortunate to have each other and family along this journey with you. So did his yeah. like pursuing a stand-up comedy, did you feel like the need, like you want to try the things that he was trying and then down the line, did you feel like you want to try the things that you were trying? Or yeah. Was- <laughs> so, uh, it's funny, like we both were trained actors by the time we, well, first of all, okay, we finished acting school in Vancouver. Right. We were from a smaller town like uh, Kelowna. We lived in Mission for a little while. And then I lived like my, my teenage years from like 13 on in Kelowna. My parents moved, which is like the interior of British Columbia. Mm-hmm. And we moved to Vancouver. But at that time, we finished acting school. And Josiah was producing uh, uh, a short film, which I uh, got a role in. And he made me audition for it, basically. Right. Uh, but it's kind of a long story. It was really funny. But anyways, he was producing the feature film based off that short film. And he decided... Um, after seeing, he, he looks at me and he goes, uh, hey, Paul, what's that X on the calendar over there? And like our tiny little apartment, we have this calendar. <laughs> and uh, I was like, nothing, man. And it said now. And he was like, Are, is that like your set date to go to California? And I was like, maybe. And I wasn't telling anybody because I didn't want to hear anything, you know. So right. I was kind of like planning to go to California on my own at that point because I knew he had some stuff in production in Vancouver Mm -hmm. and I had an agent that was helping me get some work in California and I was 19 at the time and he goes but that's like three days from now he's like what's this little shoebox you got packed together there and like this stuff he goes he goes you're going to California I was like yeah I can't hide it from you man he's like all right well I support it and crazy enough thing he's like in the shower like the next day and he comes out and his eyes are all like he's in his towel his eyes are kind of welled up he goes man I um, we're, we're both we're both people of faith but he goes he goes man i just i just felt like god put it on my heart that like i'm supposed to go with you dude like i don't know what it is but like it's real like i have to go with you and he like felt like god spoke to him and put it on his heart and i was like all right sure so like we ended up going like the very next day we, he like gave away his stuff to the neighbors that needed it people that weren't as well off and he gave away wow. like a thousand josiah is so generous he had this guitar that was worth probably like twelve hundred dollars it was like a brand new electric guitar and it was like his dream guitar that he'd got and he literally gave it to this musician that was a struggling musician that was our neighbor and was like hey man i just want to give this to you because he knew how much it would be a blessing to him he could have brought it but he gave it to him and this dude was like this this kind of hardcore kind of long-haired rugged kind of beard like rocker dude that was really trying to make it and from another town and and i've never seen this like like a hard guy like that just break down crying when Josiah was just like out of generosity, just gave him that. Like, I wasn't even allowed to touch this guitar. Like it was like, <laughs> it, it was like his baby. But like that just showed how willing Josiah was to go with me, and also just a part of his um, generosity heart. And that's the way he's always been. And mm-hmm. you know, even through his success and everything, he would stop and and talk to homeless people, and and you know, like pick them up and take them to Costco and hook them up with food and. And just not only that, just share the time of day, you know, with them. Just, you know, that's something that he's always kind of done and we've done together. But, um, yeah, it's freaking really great. But anyways, back to your question that you were asking. Um, I did try stand-up one time. And oh, yeah? it went well. And Josiah pushed me to do it. We were like an open mic in on Sunset Boulevard in Hollywood. And uh, we were in L.A. for probably about a year at that time. And he, uh, I had this joke about like a baby shark taking off your baby toes you know when you're in the water i don't even remember how it went but josiah loved it he's like you have to do it at the open mic so he pushed me to do it and uh i did it i can't remember it probably bombed i think it got some laughs i don't really know but uh it was fun it was a fun experience but i didn't really have the drive to do stand-up comedy like josiah did i was really his corner guy you know like he said in the interview that you played before this how i would um I, he, he, I went by my middle name, James, and he, so decides like, yeah, your name should be Paulie James, and that way no one's going to know we're brothers, and you could be my manager, uh-huh. right, instead of <laughs> Paul, it's Paulie, and it's James instead of Black, so I, that was my manager name for Josiah when we first got to LA, and I would literally uh, make these phone calls, and like, hey, it's Paulie James, I'm trying to book Josiah Black, 
He's, you know, done these shows in Vancouver. Here's some of his stuff. Like, you're going to love him. He's a new fresh face from Canada. You got to get him on stage. You won't be disappointed. I would actually get him booked on these shows. And I was 19 and he was 23. And uh, he would just kill it. And by for like a year, I would just book him on shows. And I would show up there with a camera and a tripod. And just uh, I would film his sets. And, uh, you know, it was just really kind of awesome getting to have that experience with him from the ground up. And. Um, at that time, I was starting acting. I was doing commercials and I was doing, um, you know, a handful of other things. But, um, you know, so I did some modeling on the side, which was kind of cool to get started. And I, yeah, and I got decided to do some modeling gigs with me, too. And he thought that was uh, pretty fun. You know, he, he was always yeah. like a naturally ripped guy. Like my <laughs> brother barely had to work out and he was like muscular fit. So he could do like fitness modeling and everything as well. So, um, a, yeah, it was it's kind a, of fun dabbling in that. A, a, like he just seems like a jack of all trades in terms of anything entertainment like i it, it's one thing to act and i've i've dealt with actors i've done a little bit of it myself in the past it's really a whole other thing to get up there and not only do a little bit of modeling but also my god like stand up com stand up comics i've only known a handful of them only one or two and it just seems like the most unforgiving work in in the entire world uh right it, like, is there anything, like, is there any fun story you were talking about, like, getting him gigs and stuff? Is there, like, any great story where he bombed super hard or, or like, or whatever? Like, obviously, he kept his spirits up with everything, but, like, like a, a good story like that. Yeah, no, honestly, like, there, I feel like there's so many, but um, just specific times, like, mm -hmm. when people would try and heckle Josiah... Like, you know, people that are, like, being, like, pricks in the audience. And yeah. they just want, they're just there yeah. having a meal. And they're like, oh, they try and say something. Like, he was always just so good at, like, snapping back and then getting information from them and then just, like, using it back on these people and getting the yeah. whole room to just laugh at these specific idiots that would try and heckle him, you know what I'm saying? But, uh, uh, yeah, I, I think just a, just a lot of that, honestly. And, um, See, and yeah, I, and it was I, just funny. And I would say, like, that makes total sense. Because, like, the one thing I I get a sense of is just not only uh, him, him, but also yourself. Like, you're just so comfortable in your own skin and doing this stuff. I mean, it takes a certain amount of bravery to put yourself out there like that in, in so many ways that you just have to be comfortable with it. You have to let things kind of roll off your shoulders and, and just go with the flow. And it and also yeah. a sense of humor doesn't a sense of humor doesn't really yeah. hurt anything. It makes it better. Absolutely. And that's another thing that was a joy living with Josiah. You know, we lived with each other for years and just getting started in Vancouver first and then Los Angeles. And uh, having his sense of humor and I would make him laugh. I'm not a stand up comedian, but like I, I would get Josiah going like we shared the same, same sense of humor. And I would we would just get each other laughing like in our small apartments that we lived in. And like sometimes we just laugh ourselves to sleep, telling stories or or, or whatever else, but it's, it's just another reason that it's a joy to be around Josiah. And he's a very strong, confident dude, but he's also like got a soft heart. You know, he's got, he's got, he's always had a really good heart where he, um, you know, know how to be real at the same time, you know? Mm. Um, so he, he had a really good balance uh, between that. But uh, yeah, as far as acting, like it, 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 it takes bravery. A lot of times you're performing in front of a lot of like a, crew of 50 people you know there's gonna be millions of people that are watching you when it comes out and uh you know it's it's not i still don't think it's as as scary as stand-up comedy so i always tip my hat to my brother josiah for <laughs> all the work he's done with, with his stand-up yeah, you know? yeah, of course. yeah trust, trust me i'm working on my own youtube series show and it, let me tell you just trying to be in front of camera by yourself monologuing out loud it's tough and like so i i can recommend anybody that wants to be able to do that like so i'm not even a trained actor but yeah, yeah yeah so but no, i want to go, like, go into more into acting part like say both of your careers kind of like start to take off a little bit more like you get like more commercials like more tv series like and movies and then josiah lands this huge role in the movie jigsaw so let's can you talk about like that like when did you find out he got the role of jigsaw and did, did he tell you about that or because of like hollywood ndas did he really keep that secret from like that from you or like whenever you land like a big like tv or movie role did you keep it a secret from him or anybody in your family well, first of all, with him and I, there, with this stuff, there was no secrets. We were always the first person, like, "Hey, man, I gotta share this with you," you know. With, with, but we know that it's exclusive information between him and us. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, if, he, if there was certain stuff with a script, he wouldn't maybe be sharing that with me, you know, or whatever. But um, 
like if, if producers don't want things talked about about the script but like as far as getting the role and things like that uh yeah so it's it kind of a small small world story of how the whole jigsaw thing panned out for josiah mm-hmm. uh basically like my last like week in vancouver before i even moved to la um i bumped into this guy on the street and i asked him for directions and uh his name's dustin and he's basically like Hey, yeah, like, uh, I don't, I'm not from here. I'm from LA. I'm just here on like a student, uh, like thing working on a TV show as like, uh, an intern or whatever. And I was like, Oh, right on. You're from LA is what he said. I was like, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm moving there. Like he's a stranger. So I could tell him at that point because I wasn't really like, telling anybody. Mm-hmm. He goes, Oh, right on. Like, look me up when you come out there. He's like, I live in, you know, I'm from Malibu. My parents have a house out there or whatever. And he's an extremely nice guy. And I was like, all right, sweet man. So when we ended up getting to LA, uh i called this guy up and i was like hey dude how's it going like uh you know dustin like I, you gotta meet my brother and you know we're in la he goes oh you guys actually made it like no way from canada yeah yeah um anyways came, became really good friends with this guy and he was like um studying to be a director at the time and just, just kind of studying all aspects of film you know to find a career in there because he was interested in it but um he became one of our really good friends uh we started going to the same church together and uh became friends with his wife and um anyways this this was like fast forward like six years later um dustin the same guy i'm talking about calls josiah and me basically like hey i want you guys to audition for this project la da 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 um you know uh i'm working for uh like a management company and and mark berg who's the head of uh this Mm -hmm. management company i work for is also producing this movie called i think it was like saw legacy at the time the working title yeah um and uh, anyways, I was camping, so I got the voicemail like a week later. And by the time I showed mm. up to meet up with Josiah, we were at our house in Canada together. And he goes, man, did you get this audition from Dustin? And I go, uh, yeah, I, I think I missed out on it, dude. I got the voicemail like a week late. But I was like, dude, let's just focus on you. And, and, and you know, let's let's focus on you getting this. So it was a self-tape audition. And I remember like him going to do his work on it in the front yard on the, on the audition for his character. And he's like, hey, Paul, like, I'm having a struggling time connecting with this man. Like, can you help me out? I was like, yeah, yeah. We always coach each other on our acting. You know, it's good to have someone to get you out of your own head and whatever. So I remember actually coaching him on that and working with him on, on, on that, um, on the sides for that audition. And, uh, he did the audition. It went well. And just like anything, you just kind of forget about it. Right. Because you have so Mm -hmm. many auditions that come. And, uh, I remember like a month went by and he didn't hear anything. So at that point you just kind of figure you didn't get it because that's kind of how it works a lot of the time. (laughs) Right. And, uh, they reached out to him like a month, uh, a month after. And they were like, Hey, so we're pretty sure we want you, but not for the role that you auditioned for. It was, they're like, we want you for the role of Edgar Munson. I think that's right. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, but we need it. We need you to audition for that as well. And I wasn't there to help him on that one. And uh, I remember just being like, hey, man, send me that tape. I want to watch it. I want to see how you did. And, and he sent it to me. And I was like, you're going to book that, dude. They're going to they're gonna book you on that role. You absolutely killed it. I don't know if the, his audition tape's been released for that movie or not. But um, he absolutely crushed the audition. It's just him and a, a white wall doing doing this scene as Edgar Munson. And uh, I remember following up with him a few days later. And, um, hey, have you heard anything back? No, not yet. And then he hit me up like, yeah, I got the role. And I was like, yeah, it makes sense. Like, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I was pretty, I was pretty excited for him and, and he was pretty stoked as well, but it was just like normal for Joe. He was like, yeah, yeah, I got it. Like, you know, it didn't seem like he was freaking out or anything like that, but that's just how chill you saw. I really was about life, you know, and rolling with the punches. So, um, yeah. And he absolutely killed it as you guys know, in, in, in his, uh, in his role. In absolutely. That movie. Uh, yeah. Exactly. They made a lot of money. Yeah. And the movie <laughs> did well. Made, made a lot of money. It was talking yeah. to the box office for like three or four weeks during the October uh, um, probably like Halloween time. Yeah, like yeah, it, exactly. it definitely it definitely topped the box office in its opening week and I can't I don't remember all the the facts, but definitely made over a hundred million dollars just Worldwide. For, exactly. for, for the eighth That's film in a cool. long running franchise. I mean that is that is something. And the one thing I really wanna we're gonna have uh Josh Stolberg in here. I really want to talk to him about just crafting that scene. Uh obviously just because it's so different from anything else that we've seen in the entire franchise. I mean, yeah, it stands out, and I think that's one of the reasons why this is news is so striking. Uh, your your brother's passing is just like he doesn't have uh, for the most part. He takes up the b- very beginning of it, but for the first part, you're like, oh, 
like this is so different, new, and original for this franchise that yeah, even though he's only in it for pretty much the beginning and a little bit here and there throughout, you're yeah. like, oh man, like he he's memorable. Oh, uh, absolutely, yeah, and, and yeah, that that performance is so great. So ex yeah. that's yeah. that's and that's one of the things I was going to ask you also on that part there is because. Like they, there's talks in the DVDs commentaries that they wanted to bring potentially bring the character back. Is, it, is that something that you would be interested in? Like, if they wanted to bring back the uh, Edgar Munson character, would you be open to uh, potentially filling the role for Josiah down the stretch? Well, it's tough because I, I can't step in Josiah's shoes. Oh, for of what course. You guys I, I, oh, I would. I, but like, that was, I, 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 I want like, yeah. if I could step. I like to my point. We're we're very big fans of this franchise. It's more of a soap opera than it is like a horror franchise at this at this level. It's right. kind of it's so interconnected and everything. Like in in general, like you could they could bring you back as a legitimate family member to Edgar Munson. I mean, or Absolutely. something yeah. like some kind of connection uh, later yeah. down the line. Because I feel like that's something that could work. I mean, you literally Absolutely. stepping in your brother's shoes, yeah. playing that character. That's a lot harder to discuss. I would imagine. We can understand that. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I would uh, definitely, absolutely, I would love to honor Josiah in that way and, um, you know, just carry that forward. I think I think that would be an awesome opportunity. Now, I have no idea where the writers are going with these things, you but know, um, I, I, if they ever approached me, you know, for something like that, that's definitely something I would um, love to uh, love to discuss with them. So you guys are fans of the show. You have to write in to uh, the writing team. You have to let Josh absolutely. know. And, uh, <laughs> no, yeah, like, and I know, I know. I want to make Josiah proud. <laughs> well, like I, that's the one thing I really like. I know, I know. Jacob wants to ask him too. Is like, how did like it, did Josh think? Uh, Josh and Pete, did they think of any way of using um, your brother in the future of the series? I mean, they the, the series is known for bringing back people. Like it's yeah. interconnective tissue and everything. If you yeah. introduce one character, they can have a complete backstory and flashbacks or something, and just like build upon them to make them more right, right, part right. of this yeah. world. And he had a very yeah. important part with the main character so it was pretty clear that he was going to come back at some way way shape or form yeah. in the down the line yeah josiah had, had mentioned some things to me like that before that there was actually talks of that you know uh -huh. um like uh multiple films kind of thing with his character that he'd um heard of or um but yeah Just I, honestly plans, like, yeah. yeah no I, I would be that would be really cool you know if um if they brought that, tied that into the story somehow in some way, you know, even still, you know, yeah. so, um, Absolutely. yeah. So, and I, going back, transition to that. So one thing I was going to ask also, one of the reason we're doing the charity stream tonight is that, uh, joint, uh, money for his family on Alicia. Can you talk about, you know, his relationship with Alicia, uh, when it met them and what she meant to your family? Yeah. So crazy thing is, uh, his wife, Alicia, so you're talking about, right? Yes. Um, yeah. Now Alicia Black, same last name mm -hmm. as me. It's kind of crazy. We were actually in the same acting class together at acting school. And when you're kind of in that class where you cycle through all your different classes together with the same group of 12 people, you're in like movement classes together, voice, you're in your acting technique. Like you're getting deep and you're getting real with these people. So Alicia is somebody I got to know uh, way before just I even met her, she, which is kind of crazy. Oh, and nice. and uh, I guess... You know, Alicia and I became good friends. And uh, down the line, after Josiah had moved from, well, I guess I guess there was one point where I had introduced Josiah and Alicia together, uh, like in, a, in the hallway at school, just really briefly, like, oh, hey, this is my brother, like, this is Alicia or whatever. It was really briefly. They didn't really connect then, but it was uh, like five years later, Josiah was like working on a project in Vancouver and he was already living in LA at the time, but he, ended up booking a project with Alicia and they actually met on set like and actually had this cool experience together where they actually like bonded and hung out and I found out that they were dating and I was like what like you're dating like my friend Alicia like that's unreal and then fast forward they're like getting married and I'm in the wedding and then they're just <laughs> it's crazy it was like one of my good friends that I got to reconnect with became my sister-in-law and she is uh, really like my sister I, I love her uh, to bits and we get along so well we, we can get under each other's skin and tease each other and right uh, that's kind of fun for me to do that with her but um yeah she's uh she is a huge part of our family and also a big shout out uh josiah my brother and alicia had a baby boy yesterday 
really? Oh, we, yeah. really? We, yeah. we, oh, we thought she was, imagine. we thought she, she was we due. Thought she was day. Yeah. We, we like, said she day. It's early. It was early. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So it was uh, like the 31st of December that was like a due date. Um, but it ended up happening early. So yeah, it's that's great. what I oh. spoke to her. She's like, it was due any time. And I was like, well, that, that's awesome. Yeah. Baby boy. Yeah. So yeah. we're supposed to be there. I'm actually in my condo uh, with my wife in Huntington Beach, California, in Southern California. Um, my wife and I have been, we've been working out here doing some projects and things like that. But um, we were supposed to be there because we were going to come, you know, for the holidays and then yeah. be there right. for that. And it happened early. <laughs> so it's a, it's a boy and they didn't know because they didn't, they didn't, uh, they waited to see if it was going to be a boy or a girl until the day it was, the baby was born. And um, sure enough, Josiah has a son and it looks like him so it's kind of crazy right oh, like, there you go <laughs> we, had, okay. we had we had heard that uh they would name the son after him if well, it was, was a boy if, is that is that, is that I, true I don't, going to I don't know if you know are you, you, you want to say like you don't want to say I don't. <laughs> I don't know if i can say honestly. no you don't have to you don't have to no, no, I mean, no, this is this is a public thing it's just you really like happy that it just happened yeah it's a family thing you need to talk to alicia about this because it's like she's so over the moon with everything it's just it's all great news and um and you see this is great this is this is one of the reasons like we were excited to do this is it's such you know it's such happy news such it's such a weird year right like it's it is yeah. It's Christmas uh, or, or whatever your denomination holiday is. And at the same time, it's just been a, a decade. This whole year has been a decade. And and yeah. it's just, it's worth it just kind of like put on the brakes and be like, hey, you know, like we love this franchise. We like, you know, horror communities really do take care of each other in the best way they can. And hey, if anyone has some money to give, like give to this because, you know, what a tragic situation and the fact that he he's left behind his wife and now uh, a, a two children is just it's something else so if, yeah. if this helps in any way like that's what we really want yeah exactly Absolutely. yeah yeah anybody that wants to donate that's listening all proceeds are going to go to uh my brother's wife alicia and his two babies so yeah. Um, it'd be honoring Josiah and just uh, a great cause. So thanks again, guys, for uh, putting that fundraiser together for, for him. Uh, yeah, another thing I want to say about my brother is that, like, yeah. you look at his life, he's someone that loved those around him and uh, really took the time. Like, when he's on his cell phone and, and someone wants to talk to him, he'd put it away or he'd put it somewhere else and he would be in the moment with those in the room. And it's like, you just never know when your final moments might be. And Josiah was you know, out hiking and doing extreme things and he wasn't expecting to pass away, but he, he, you know, was fearlessly went for his dreams and, you know, married the woman of his dreams and, and had the children of his dreams. And, um, you know, thankfully, uh, he, he lived his life to the fullest, you know, and I just encourage everybody, you know, listening, you guys both to just remember that, you know, all the time. And, um, I believe all on top of that, I'll, I'll see him again, you know, just size faith was so strong in Jesus and he had a heart after God and, um, you know, we always talked about how this life isn't, uh, isn't it, you know, he just sigh, always said that like this life, one day you'll shed this and you'll go on to be with the heavenly father and in, in heaven. So I just, uh, those are just words of my brother. I just want to share and that like, I'm excited. I'll see him again and make him proud in this life. But, um, yeah, so <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's absolutely beautiful. Uh, well, thank you yeah. so much for joining us.